Well, 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 it becomes a bigger idea. This is exciting, man. I like these videos where I come on here and chat. Well, you've come to realize that in your life, you're pretty dissatisfied with who you are and what you've been becoming, and you want to change in your life. And we've wanted to talk about how can we change. How can we become the idea? This is you, okay? So for instance, this is the you now. How can we become the idea uh, future? How can we become the idea of the person we want to become? How can we go from the disappointing person we are now, the person that we don't like being, you know, you want to change something about your life, maybe it's your money, maybe it's your relationship with God, maybe it's your finances, maybe it's, it's your relationship with your family or whatever it is. It all stems from an idea and you have your future self here who's maybe, you know, muscular and strong. This is him being muscular. Please pretend like he's got muscles. Look at that. Wow. Incredible, isn't it? How do you take yourself from here to here? And that's what I wanted to have this masterclass on. How do you envelop and how do you develop an idea for yourself on how you can become the personalized individual? How can I take myself from the me I am now, the one who's unhappy, who's not happy with where they're at? Because chances are the reason you clicked on this video is because you want to change, you just don't know how to go about it. And that's what I'm here to solve is the gap in between here, this limbo of how do we get from this realized that version of ourselves to this version of ourselves. And if you want a little backstory and if you want proof in the pudding, I lost 70 pounds in seven months. That video is somewhere up on screen right here. I take my finances and almost quadruple them. I make money from live streaming now. I completely changed my life. I've grown 20, I've grown to having 20 pounds of muscle on my frame. I, you know, I may not look like it, but underneath this shirt there is, you know, how can I take my life to that level? Well, I'm going to explain it and the things that I did that helped change my life. And I guarantee there's going to be some sort of gold in here. So I do recommend that you just, you know, maybe do the dishes, maybe do some notes or whatever it is. You're going to find something in here that works for you. And if you don't, well, hey, I thank you for watching. I appreciate it, man. Every watch, every person that's watching is a blessing, man. I really do appreciate it. So, okay, before we keep rambling, how do I take myself from here to here? <clears throat> we'll leave this up for now because it makes sense. It's a good graphic. Okay, you have to have an idea. Right, And most people go wrong with this because they think the idea of themselves or this idea has to be some grandiose idea. It has to be some idea that is so outlandish that it doesn't make sense. Well, I do kind of want you guys to have an idea of what you could be. It has to be this crazy idea because us as humans, if you think about it, we always need to be in striving. We always need to be working towards something. Us as humans always need to be able to climb up a mountain. You know, for instance, if your idea of yourself is maybe on this level right here, if you end up getting to that level, whether it takes you five months, five years, 15 years or whatever, when you get to that level, there's no other working towards something. Humans almost kind of almost have to have a goal that's so high that doesn't make sense that they just keep working towards it. And that's what the human life is. Dr. Jordan Peterson put it best. And, and I really do think that the idea that you have to have of yourself kind of has to be a bit outlandish, but there has to be sub ideas of yourself. So for instance, if the idea of yourself you're seeing is multimillionaire, super successful, incredible relationship to God, really nice family, whatever it is, that idea that you see has to be a little bit outlandish, but you have to have those subsidized ideas. This one here has saved a lot of money and is actually working towards something. So then you end up getting to that track and then the next version of you has a relationship to God and has the family. So it always gives you something to work towards. So the way you start off is you have an idea and it's always gonna be stemmed from an idea. God said, let's make man in the, our image. God created us in an image and he used his mind. He used an idea to create us. There's creative power in you and God's creative power is in you. It all stems from an idea. Not many people are gonna be able to understand your idea and this is what I like to uh, vocalize on my channel a lot is that not many people are gonna be able to sit down and listen to what you actually have to say about your dreams because God gave you your dream for a reason. He didn't give you he didn't give them your dream for them to understand. It's not the way that it's going to work. You know, I try to explain the things that I do to people and it just doesn't make sense because they can't see the vision I can see. And what I'm starting off is there's an idea slash dream. It always is. And you know you're called to a higher purpose. Secondly, how can I take myself from me to the future? Um, action. Now hold up before you click off and you get mad because what do you mean I gotta take action? If you don't take action on the certain thing, if you never have an idea of who you wanna become, then how do you expect to take a certain action? It all stems from one thing. You know what I hear a lot is, I'll do that later. The person that says I'll do that later 
is not living in this zone. He is not doing that certain thing. I'll do that later does not happen in the future. If you need to, what you need to do is you need to take the action right now. If it's what you, if, if what you want to do is you want to go lose weight. If what you want to do is have a nice car. If what you want to do is start a business, uh, uh, do something for your family. It all stems from here. It all stems from taking the action necessary to do the certain thing. And I know it sounds cliche to say taking the action, but how many of you can really truly say that you've been taking action? Because the hardest thing you're ever going to have to do in your life is take the first step. You know, the one thing I tell people all the time is if you've taken the first step, you're already better than 99% of the people out there. Take the action required. Take the action necessary. And if you can take the action that requires and leads you to the future version of yourself, then that's great. But it's all planned prior action. Now, whimsical action or on the whim action is what I like to say makes sense when you have fleeting motivation. Motivation is fleeting. You know, you take action with motivation motive right there you have motivation action which is the action that comes when you're really excited when you're really enthused you get a good idea and you want to actually go with something but the one action i like to talk about is thought out because this motivation action right here can be very fleeting because Next Tuesday, you're not going to have that same motivation. Two months from now, you're not going to have that same motivation. Four weeks from now, you're still not going to have that same motivation. But throw or thought out action or throw action is really the best action you can take. Because what happens when you take throw action, it means that you've already prepared and you've already planned for the things that you didn't think were going to come. Because if you can take a note for, a notepad for yourself and write down all the things that are going to happen, you know, if you're inspired, you're going to have that inspired idea, but it's not going to last. You're not going to want to keep going to the gym five months in. You're not going to want to keep going to the gym a year in. But what happens is when you thought out a certain aspect, you're going to think to yourself, okay, I know in a year that I'm probably not going to want to go to the gym. How can I make myself stay at the gym? Is it I need to envision my future self? Is it I need to watch and, and figure out what I want to actually become? Does it mean I need to switch gyms? Does it mean I need to do something or I need to change my program? Does it mean I need to change my diet? What is it that's going to keep me at the gym and keep me entertained? And when you have thought out action and you're actually thinking about certain things and what the repercussions are and what might happen and how I can overcome it, you start to have a list and you start to be more prepared because what happens is, is we are not prepared. We as humans are not prepared. We think we are, but when stuff hits the fan, S-H-I-T hits the fan, um, we are not prepared to deal with it. And I think if you can formulate an idea for yourself on how I can be prepared, it all stems from thought out action. If you can think about a certain thing and make a list on what's going to happen or what you think might happen and how I would get over to that, it eases that anxiety because I find a lot of people have anxiety about becoming their future self because they're scared of the unknown. But what happens, because when people are scared of the unknown, they're worried. They don't know what is going to happen. They don't know what's going to come. They don't like to the change. They don't want to adapt into the change, which is the next thing is change. And pardon me for my writing. Change. You're worried about the change. You're worried about what not's gonna, or what's not going to happen. But if I give you a plan, for instance, if I give you a scavenger hunt, but I tell you not where, you, where you're not supposed to go or where you, where you shouldn't. Let me slow down. Okay. If I give you a five-year plan, but I don't tell you how certain things are going to go, how likely are you going to be to do it? Well, you may, some, some people may do it. The daring few may do it. But what truly is exciting is when I give you a five-year plan and I tell you that I've thought out everything that's going to happen, all the ways that things go wrong, all the way that things are going to go right, and what to do if things go wrong, you're going to be a bit more likely to take it because you know about all the repercussions. You know about what might happen. You know about all the wrongs. You know about all the rights. So if you can think out your plan, if you can think out your plan and take action on that plan towards working towards your future that's self, whether that's going to the gym, whether that's doing cardio, whether that's changing your money habit or money spending or saving habits, whether that's praying every day, whether whether that's whatever it is to your idea, because this video isn't about me, it's about you. Whatever your idea is about your future self, think about the certain thing and think about what you're going to do to take action and get to that, sta uh, that, that, that space and think about all the right things and all the wrong things. I'm not going to want to do this in a year, so how can I make it fun and exciting? How can I keep myself doing it? Because most people fall off the wagon within three weeks. I like to call it the terrible threes, even though the three is the trinity, the terrible threes. Three weeks, or sorry, three days, three weeks and three months. Most people cannot get past this barrier. You tell one person, how long were you going to the gym? I went for three months and I gave up. How long did you try to exercise? You know, I did it for three days and I gave up because I got sore. I like to call it the terrible threes because the terrible threes are gross, but you can find a way to work around these terrible threes 
because you've thought about the action. You know that in three weeks, you're not going to want to do it. How can I make it exciting? Think about how you want to become your future self. And it all starts with change. Are you going to adapt to change? Are you going to embrace the change? Are you going to want to be one that changes? Most people say they want one thing, but really they don't want that one thing. They just want the things that come with it without having to put forth the work. That's why I think Ozempic is incredibly popular right now is because people want to lose weight without having to lose the weight. Trust me. Listen, if I, like, I, 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 I do not like pharma tech companies. But Ozempic's got a stranglehold on people because it's going to go into that place where, you know, where, where we talk about in Wally, man, where, where people are sitting around getting things ordered to them and they're becoming fat. Ozempic's that literal drug where you don't have to do anything and you can lose weight because it suppresses your appetite. Are you willing to embrace the change? Are you willing to embrace the hard work? Are you willing to embrace the effort? Your future self doesn't require or doesn't come without having some sort of sacrifice. Your future self is not going to be you. You are not going to be that person if you're not willing to change and if you're not willing to give up something that you haven't ever given up. It's going to be hard. No one says it's going to be easy, but most of you cannot get around this habit right here. Change. Can you change? Can you change your diet? Can you change the way you talk to people? Can you change the way you talk to yourself? Can you change your outlook on yourself? See, can you actually do it? And I highly doubt that a lot of people can. But if you're one of those people who want something different, which I do suggest, that, or I do know that you actually are because you're this far into the video and I'm chatting and my mouth is filled up with saliva right now, <clears throat> embrace the change. You obviously want the change. You're obviously here for a certain reason. You already, you've obviously snuck out the information and you're here right in front of this calling saying, become your higher version of yourself. Can you change? And if you can't, that's okay. But inevitably, what's going to happen is you're going to be 90 years old and you're going to be on your deathbed saying, I wish I had a change. So boo-hoo, stop crying and change. Do something about yourself. Change what it is that you don't like about yourself. Sit down on your bed for five minutes, 10 minutes, and think about what am I doing that is still hurting me? Jordan Peterson said it best. I'm referring to Jordan Peterson again. What am I doing right now that is still hurting me that I know I can change and I still haven't changed? Is it, is it that I'm eating too much at night? Is it that I'm eating too many fats at night? You know, chips, Doritos, uh, nachos, ramen, whatever it is. Am I doing that too much? Am I not praying enough? Am I not getting in the word enough? Am I not saving enough in, or, or spending enough money? Whatever it may be. And spending enough money, I mean on really uh, uh, on assets. But what are you not willing to give up? What are you not willing to change about yourself? Because this doesn't happen without change. This right here, this future version of yourself requires change. And if you're not willing to change, well, good luck. I'm sorry, you're not going to become that idea of yourself. You're not going to become the person you want. You're not going to have the girls. You're not going to have the money. You're not going to have the fame, the fortune, the riches, the be blessed by God, whatever you may call whatever this future version of yourself is, maybe just an improved physique. You will not have that if you do not change your, your, your ideas. You will not have it if you change your mindset, if you don't change your, your physique, if you don't change anything because nothing happens if nothing happens or nothing changes if nothing changes. This is the fun part about unedited videos where it's more of a masterclass because you can see me ramble and see all the mistakes that I make, but it makes me human. Some people like it, some people don't, but hey, uh, that's not what I'm here for. Okay, how can we change? You to the future. And I think one thing I want to touch on is this right here. You know, what, what, what do we have up here? We've got the brain, your mindset. What's your mindset like? What's your version of money? One guy came to me at work and asked me what I had about money. And I said, well, I need to talk to you about something. Before you want to make money and save money, what's your idea of money? What is money to you? Money is something I do to work for to pay bills. Well, no kidding that you don't ever have money because your mindset on money is totally ridic ridiculous and ludicrous. Yeah, I make, I go to work to pay bills. Holy crap. Money doesn't work for me. Money is a, money, money's a trade of time. Money is a trade of energy. Money is not real, so I don't care about money. What is your mindset of money? What is your mindset on change? What is your mindset on becoming a future version of yourself? What does this guy know that you don't know? You know, what is he thinking versus what are you thinking? Because we all inherently know what our future version of ourselves can, is, is thinking. Like there is something inside of us that's saying that I know that my future idea of myself is thinking positive thoughts right now, is thinking good thoughts, is thinking about abundance and riches, and is thinking about God and my family and, and all these things that you want to think of is, is thinking about how to talk to girls and is confident in the way that he talks to girls. Because your future self is thinking this, but you inherently know it right now. Like I know my future self is thinking about the next business he can acquire. I know it's already happening but I'm not feeling that right now. My mindset hasn't shifted like that. You need to shift your mindset 
in the present moment to think more like your future self. Because what happens is, is you send signals to your brain that allocates and says, okay, wait, hold up. I'm not in this pattern anymore. I'm now in this future pattern. So when you can say to yourself that, okay, hold up. I want to become somebody different. I need to do something different. So let me think a certain way. Let me act a certain way. Let me be a certain way. Let me start wearing the clothes that I know my future self would wear. Let me go to the gym my future self would go to. Let me talk the way my future self would talk. And when you change your mindset and it all starts with the mindset, you then start to work towards your future self. This could happen in a week. This could happen in a year. This could happen in 10 years. I don't know what the future idea of yourself is, but I know it's something grand and it's something big and I'm incredibly excited to see you work towards it. But you need to understand that it all stems from change. It all stems from what do I need to change about myself that I don't like? What do I need to change about myself that is not acceptable? What can I do to become the future version of myself? And I think that's all. Truthfully and honestly, that's the things that I did to change. I had to take action. I had to go to the gym, right? I had to have an idea. I had to have something I wanted to become. And I had to have this unrealistic goal. Like to me, a million dollars may not be enough. Maybe it's five, 10, but it always keeps me working towards something else. A relationship to God is not good enough. Maybe I want to actually speak to God personally and hear his voice. You know what I mean? Something that kind of seems outlandish and not make sense. I had to have that idea for myself because it always keeps me working. You know, I had to be prepared. I had to think about certain things. I had to understand that when making a call option, maybe I'm going to lose this $5,000 investment this week. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm willing to take that risk. I've thought about what happens if I lose that lose that five thousand dollars you think about these certain things and the last thing is i had to be acceptable to change i had to understand that change is good and change isn't bad don't be afraid to stay, take that first step into change don't be afraid to say to yourself and mix things up and say to yourself hey you know what i'm i'm willing to change because i'm not happy with where i'm at and the last thing is is you have to change your mindset because if you don't change your mindset well good luck Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. This has been a little masterclass. It hasn't been too long, and I do appreciate every single one of you who's tuned in and had this conversation with me. And hopefully you learned something, because if you didn't, there's tons of other videos out there. God bless.